What's up, what's up, Builders Club TV Nation? You got Dewan Jones here, your professional stay-at-home dad. And man, I am fired up. I am super excited about the guest we got for you tonight, family. We got Brian Bean on the show, the legendary Brian Bean. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, entrepreneur, business mentor, professional speaker. Let me change that. Probably one of the best speakers you're ever going to see if you have an opportunity to watch this band on stage. We got him here for us tonight. Let me get myself on camera, family, so you can see me live and direct. And so I can thank you once again for tuning into the show. Thank you for sharing the show, getting the, the message out there about the TBC TV Nation the first, the very first work from home tonight show. It's here, it's live, it's direct. Let me make sure our good friend Brian Bean can hear us. Brian, can you hear me okay, sir? Doing good. Let me get you on camera so the family can hear you and see you live, man. So we can chop it up with, with you for a second, man. We know you've been busy out here in these internet streets, man, but we, we're gonna talk to you just a second. There you go, what's going on, brother? Everything's good, man. How you feel? I appreciate you having me. First and foremost, you're doing a great job. Awesome, 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 man. Hey, we're excited, excited about having you on the show. Most people have heard the name Brian Bean if they're anywhere around this work from home industry, but we wanted to have you on the show, man. Uh, Brian, what we do on the Builders Club TV, basically, I know you've seen the show a little bit, but we like to talk to successful people about their history, their past, their, their path to success because we believe there's so many golden nuggets uh in in that time frame uh you know to learn from so many things so many jewels so much gold so many diamonds when it concerns knowledge and education on how to become successful in this work from home industry so man we just excited to have you man thank you again i gotta tell you, i gotta thank you again for coming on to the show brother no nah, thanks for having me man i'm home I'm, I'm home anytime i can spread some information to some people Maybe trying to walk the same path. I'm all for it, man. So excuse, excuse my voice, man. I've been under the weather. I um, had an event last week, and it was hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. On stage, off stage, AC, no AC. So it, it caught up with me this week. So if I sound like Elmer Fudd. Hopefully they're still getting information through my voice. <laughs> no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I just want to make sure that we got your audio level up. Uh, <coughs> there we go. So the good, so the family can hear you. Uh, so man, let's get right into it, man. We we're gonna talk about the path. What we do, man. We jump into what we call the Builders Club TV time machine, Brian. Can you take us back, man? Can you take us back? We'd like to know what was life like for Brian Bean before you started this work from home industry before you start coaching thousands of people all around the world. What were you doing before all, all of this, man? Yeah, man, I, I was on a normal path. I feel like I was on a normal path, normal meaning what most people do. Um, I grew up on both sides of the tracks. I always tell people I had a little action in my backyard because the, the, the uh, apartments and uh, at the time, it wasn't a hood hood, but it was hood enough at the time <laughs> coming up during that um, crazy crack epidemic. I saw crack cocaine for the first time. A friend of mine hopped the fence, and I was like, "Man, we starting to sell this." And I'm like, "Well, what is that?" They like, "Well, this is." Basically, I knew it was drugs, and I was like, "I don't know if I want no parts of that." That's the cool thing about the way I grew up. I grew up on the other side of the track. Both parents, cool little suburban home, basement parties. You know, my, my dad is a former parliament Funkin' delegate, George Clinton, and Lucy Collins. Wow. You know, Dr. Dre and Tupac, and people still sample my dad to this day, man. And um, wow. so I grew up. On a lot of music, a lot of musicians, a lot of famous people in the Hall of Fame and all that stuff. Yeah. The ironic thing was the elements were in my backyard. So I did it like most kids. Um, stayed out of trouble for the most part. I wasn't in no real big trouble, but it was just inches away. And I went to college, just decided to go that route instead, climbing that corporate American ladder. And then my sophomore year, man, I got introduced to network marketing. Mm. And network marketing actually was my start of entrepreneurship. So when I graduated, I went to job for about three months, man, and retired at 22. Because um, my 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 part time education in yeah. college about network marketing was able to create a full time income. So I fired my boss man twenty two years ago. That wow, wow, <laughs> wow! Can you tell us, Brian, if you can remember back then what your yeah. first impression of network marketing was when you first encountered it? Yeah, yeah, it was cool, man. I, I was I was too. You got to understand, I was nineteen, right? Right. So I was too naive to know that this wasn't supposed to make sense, if that makes any sense. Like, in other words, I had zero fears. I had zero doubts. I was like, man, I get paid back then with self-invitation. So I'm like, man, let me get this straight. 
I get paid every time people pay the phone bill. I get a check. Dude was like, yes. I was like, and that comes every month, regardless of whether I do anything or not. He was like, yes. And I was like, I paid one time this $500 fee, which I don't have, but I'm going to get it. <laughs> and, and I get paid every single time the people are introduced and their people and their people pay the bill too. He was like, yes. So I was too naive to know anything about a pyramid, yeah. legal, illegal. It just made sense to me, man. And luckily, it was a legitimate company, still doing billions today. And um, I literally found a specialized skill set in the MLM world and um, probably that into the speaking and training world. And like I said, 20 plus years later, now I teach networkers how to do it for a living as part of one of my friends. Absolutely, one of the best to do it. By the way, let's 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 go back. Let's continue in that time frame. I want to find out from Brian Bean. You know, you obviously got started in your first company. Crazy, right? What was the experience like? Did you have success right away, or were there some dark times? No, nah, man. You know, it's funny, man. I, I tell people the fame often comes before the proportion, right? Mm. I was real popular for whatever reason because I was so young. Yeah, I was so determined. I I, I ranked up really fast. Rank, ranking up back then was just really the first position. Yeah. Man, I had the <laughs> one I had people trying to marry me off to their daughters, man. I had wow. people, I had people taking pictures of this 19 year old phenom. They didn't even know, man. My biggest check at the time was like five hundred and thirty dollars. Mm. <laughs> I was struggling like crazy, but the fame often comes before the fortune. So to answer your question, I wasn't real successful in my first company, but it did set the foundation. Um, it gave me some excellent training. I learned the um, psychology of colors. I learned the psychology of um, walking the room, working the audience, highs and lows, pitch and tone, elevation, um, conflict resolution skills, healthy work ethic. The science. I all these things that, yeah, the science to it. And all these things years and years and years later paid off. So a lot of times it's not the compensation that you get up front a lot of times that makes you successful. It's the intrinsic value and what I ended up doing with all that education. So I ended up hitting the next, the top of six companies after that. I hit the top of six companies when my highest check in my first company was $500. So it just kind of goes to show you, man, if you walk your path and you know what you're doing and you know what you're supposed to be doing, you know what God's mission is for you, it'll all work out. Wow. Wow. That's absolutely, I agree with that. Um, So your first company, biggest check, 530 bucks. Wow. Right. How long did you stay there? Did you, did you stay there for a while or what happened uh, in your next venture that you discovered? Yeah, I only stayed there for about two years, from 96 to like 98. And then after 98, once I got my feet wet, it was still back then in the telecom industry. I hit it out the park with a company to this day that's not even in business. It was called E.TV. Wow. E.TV. And Ted Turner's son was behind it. And Ted Turner's a billionaire here in Atlanta. Yeah. And then me and my business partners got together and formed this organization. And man, we, we couldn't be stopped, man. That's the one that actually retired me in uh, 19... 97 actually so the first company was 95 to 97 and then the company that retired me was 1997 all the way through so that's the one i hit out the park started making more money in a month than my job was paying me all, all quarter wow was that this was that this that was the second company or was that like uh several companies after the first time no that was the, the first one i made the five hundred dollar check that's, that's the most I ever made, and then my second company was the retirement checks. <laughs> so wow! I didn't, have, I didn't have a lot of fluff in the middle, man. Yeah, the second company was the one. So that is not the typical story. Tell me, nah, tell me, what do you think the different <laughs> the difference was? Because a lot of people watching the interview are gonna be like, "Well, dang, second company retired." What do you think the difference was for you, and why, how you were able to? Why do you think you were able to achieve that when most people are not? Yeah, well, the difference was I, I've always been ahead of trends. I think I think a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on their compensation plan, their product. But really, man, your compensation plan and your product, this is back when I was doing no marketing heavy, right? Before I, before I became a speaker. Right. What I, what I would like to tell networkers when I coach them now is you have to find the industry that best suits you. And you can always um, narrow down and find the right company, right comp plan, and the right things that make it the best opportunity for you. But I was good at staying ahead of the trend. So once the telecommunication trend died with long distance, then we got into what's called the set-top box industry. That's before laptops were really popular. Your television screen became your art computer. Right. But when that died down, I got into the exotic beverage industry and hit it out the park with, you know, Tahitian only. Made about Legendary. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Made about three quarters of a million over there, man. Um, uh, so I'm still in my twenties at the time. And then when that died down, I got to travel. See, I don't jump around. A lot of networkers jump around looking for the best comp plan. I only, the only reason I hit the top of seven companies is because industries tend to come and go. Yeah. Founders tend to come and go. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I was really good at making sure that the industry I was involved in was popular. And hitting the top of the comp plan is easy after that. Right, Brian, I, I want to ask you this because you touched on something that I think, um, uh, and, and we had Damon Coleman on the show, and he kind of talked about this kind of this subject jumping around, right? And he yeah. kind of talked about how um, that whole entire concept is kind of distorted when it comes to how you know comes to how people think about jumping around, and how people always are uh, looking at that as a negative versus not really looking at what that truly means. When you, when you talk about jumping around, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, we, we believe in failing forward, right? We believe in, you know, finding that thing. Like you said, you got to find something, an industry that fits you, right? And sometimes yeah. that might not come with the first venture. That might not be in the first leg of the journey, right? So Correct. Wh how do you feel about that? And why do you think people... Uh, tend to look down upon folks that have been in several different companies apparently trying to find their way. Yeah, well, see, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Here's why. Jumping around has a positive and negative connotation because very few people get a chance to understand the reasons people jump around. See, mm. I jumped out of one company into another when I found out that one founder had no integrity whatsoever. So people say he's jumping around. I'm like, no, I'm not going to take my team to an organization. See, what people don't understand, the higher up you get in these companies, the more you see, mm. right? The more money you make, the more you see behind the scenes. Mm. And with me, the more integrity you should have. So what happens is, I leave, I left companies back then when the industry either was over and it's a wrap. For example, if, if, if you in telecommunications back then in 96 and the cell phone comes out and now long distance is free on your cell phone and you're trying to sell long distance, you wanna, you wanna, you're in a lose-lose situation. So yeah. you have to jump. You, you have to jump ship. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. If you jump ship onto a boat and you find out that the founder can care less about the reps, then you got to jump ship. Does that make sense? Uh, that makes a lot of if, sense. If you, can, if you get into the exotic beverage industry and at first you were the biggest and baddest and only one, and then there's 17 other ones that come out after that, and you realize that all of this stuff is watered down, you gotta jump ship. So my point is, it's nothing wrong with changing companies. I stayed true to the MLM industry until I found the right combination. The reason people view it as a negative, not for me, but for other people, is because a lot of times they jump around with their own self-interest. In other words, mm. my check is dropping, so I'm gonna go pillage your team from this company and take them over here mm. and then get a deal from the founder and then pillage that team because I'm not meeting my quality, my um, my contractual agreement with this founder and I'm going to jump and take them over here and I'm going to get a contract over here you can see so mm. that's why it has a negative connotation because a lot of people get affected if the person is jumping is only looking out for themselves you see the difference? Right. Yes, yes, yes a lot yeah. of is there's politics in everything, man. Um, yeah. Let, let me yeah. ask you this too. When it comes to, because you touched on this as well. When it comes to an individual, because people just want to win, Brian, right? And uh -huh. they're looking for something that you know, of course, they can have fun with, something that makes sense for them, something they feel like they they can do, conf, you know, with confidence. Uh, advice for someone looking for, uh, you know, the perfect deal. You know, how, how do you look at that? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't look for the perfect deal. If you look for the perfect deal, everything looks perfect in the presentation, mm -hmm. right? Well, things don't look so perfect when you start building, right? Like, <laughs> the one you probably heard this, everybody's joining. And then you get in and then don't, then don't nobody join. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so everything always looks good in what I call the, yeah. the beautiful brochure, right? Yeah, yeah. So, there's no such thing as a perfect opportunity. What you got to mm -hmm. do is say to yourself, okay, what can I wake up to and go to bed to knowing that I gave the best opportunity to everybody I exposed it to and, and I and I can sleep at night knowing that in my heart, not just because of the commission check, not just because of the product, 
not just because of the um, opportunity, but in my heart, I know that the people that I'm showing it to can benefit, it'll benefit them. See, I win, it benefits them. The perfect opportunity, if there is one, is the one that you feel like you can go to bed knowing that you helped everybody you exposed change their life. That's the perfect opportunity if it exists. If you're in it for anything other than generating wealth by helping others with the product or the comp plan, then you're in the wrong industry. Because mm. you're in the distribution business, you're in the people business. So you got to keep that in mind. Don't right. look for the perfect opportunity for you. Look for the perfect opportunity for the masses and you'll win. I'm glad to hear you break it down like that. Um, let me ask you this. So basically a person uh, really needs to think you know, hard about what it is they can be excited about every day. Go to bed at night, wake up excited about it, right? Correct. Right, right. And so do you think people uh, for the most you know, for the most part <coughs> focus on things like you said, comp plan, product, who's involved in the company, who's joining, who's not joining, and they're not really looking deep into the, you know, fact that, hey, is this something that I really want to do or am I just doing it for the check? Do you think that's something that a lot of people battle with? Because, uh, like I said, a lot of people want to just make the money, right? And they want to make the money so badly that they're willing to sacrifice everything else for whatever sounds good in the, you know, in, in the moment, right? And end up signing on, figuring out or finding out later, hey, I'm not really having fun with this. I'm not really making money with it. I'm just doing it because at the time it seemed like it was going to be exciting. Writing, but this is right. not really something that I'm excited about. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm not speaking, and I'm not judging those people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking from a vain perspective. I'm yeah. just speaking from a level of maturation. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Once you reach a certain level of maturity in the industry, like for the first 15 years of my career, I was a network marketer. And for right. the last five, I've been a speaker and, and, and trainer in my own, my own training company. So I'm speaking from a, a, a really, really high level. Right. I'm not saying I didn't once think like that, right? What's the company? What's right. the product? Right. I'm killing. Like, right. I, I know how it is, and I'm, I'm not judging people that's like that. Yeah. I'm giving them some forward thinking and what I call the helicopter or aerial perspective. That long term, the way you endure longer than two years, four years, ten years, twelve years, fifteen years, full time, feed my family in the whole nine yards, seven figures. The way you endure is after a while you start looking out for win, win, win situations. Company wins, you win. And your organization wins. You gotta look for three wins, not just you win. Because if you just look for you win, when other people start losing, you no longer win. You mm. see the oh yeah, <laughs> so oh yeah. When you create that triple win, 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 that's when you reach a certain level of maturity, and you have a helicopter perspective where you can hover above things and kind of see the whole picture, and not just the road perspective where you just right. on the highway try, You know. Right, right. Do you think that? Um, you know that's something in the industry that's changing you know there are a lot of people who you know when they they join different ventures that's something they promote heavily comp plan product um yeah. and that's kind of what is put out there in the forefront uh more than anything else and so you know when folks are new to something they're just looking for people to follow and lead them and they don't really uh know things on this level you know what i mean like you said it takes maturity in the industry or, or any industry that you're involved in to really learn things on a deeper level because there's as they say there's levels to this right do yeah. you think that that's yeah. something that's going to change or is changing where folks are starting to show people hey it's really about going after what you're passionate about no, well, I, no, I don't think that's it. It's the, I wish that was true, but what's changing the MLM industry now is the internet and social media. So, whereas it used to be really built on relationships and kneecap to kneecap and in home meetings, now they're having to adapt to the fact that you just signed up in something and you're excited about it. And then on your exact same timeline, there's some other people who claiming that their check is $500 more and they did 10% less work. So, the minute you sign up to rep now, they yeah. distracted, man. Within 30 minutes, they got somebody else on their timeline saying that you do the same thing over here and we pay out of this. So what happens is the the world has gotten smaller due to the sharing and social media and Facebook and Instagram and the internet, and the whole component. Yeah. The world is now a lot smaller. So what's changing it is people's inability to build a business both online and offline. You got to be able to do both. You right. got to have that ability to connect with people offline so that they see you a real group and you mm -hmm. gotta have the ability to expand your business your business online so you won't get pillaged by the uh, so-called uh, the people who show a whole lot but don't really have a whole bunch of substance behind them right 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 that's good stuff that's good so do you think that's the, the shift that's happening you think um 
uh, a lot of folks are migrating or starting to add on the online uh, business aspect of growing uh, their business or, you know, because there was one time where a lot of people weren't, they, they weren't convinced yet about, you know, yeah. online, right? You think yeah. that's changing? It has to, if not, you're going to be out of business. Mm. I mean, think about it. You, you can't build a business belly to belly only. And then the first thing a person asks you for, you know, a prospect may ask you for is, is your website, right? Mm. So if you don't have something that can capture their attention and continue to work on them, like attraction marketing or some kind of funnel or some way people can leverage the internet while they're at work, then you're out of business. If you don't have YouTube videos, you're out of business. If you don't have a social media, a Facebook group where your people can come together and you can train them, you out of business. If your team doesn't know how to do lives and get people signed up right away, you out of business. So it's not even a question as to whether or not you have to do it. It's a question of whether or not you're tying it into your system properly. Mm. So the old school methods that are proven and the new school technology can come together. It's not a matter of if, it's how you tie it in that makes the difference. Mm. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Let me ask you this, Brian. So um, when you... um. As you were going through your career in this industry, you know, like you said, your your story isn't typical when it comes to the time frame in which you were able to have success. But did you ever meet any pushback from friends, family, people around you not really understanding what you do? Yeah. You know, the cool thing about it, man, is I never got any pushback from my family. My family has always been 100 percent support. Now, they won't join. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> not my brother, not my sister. Not, I'm the youngest of five, right? Yeah. My mom, dad, nobody's going to join. But wow. I, but I'll be damned if they um tried to pull me away from it. And right. I, I've always just been one that they're really, really supporting. But man, that's family. Now, pushback from friends, absolutely. Because what happens is, and people miss this, when you get in network marketing, people subconsciously don't want you to succeed and it's not their fault they don't want you to succeed because if you do it highlights their failures mm. you see what i'm saying it highlights their shortcomings you, you become living proof that they can do something other than be miserable on a job so it's not that they don't want you to succeed they really just don't want you to highlight what they're not doing so you, you can't mm. take that stuff personal right right if you, if you make it then it's proof that i can do something for myself too but if we both just stay in the dark and act like nothing else exists but the 40 year 40 go, I mean, you know, go watch for 40 years, 80 hours a week, then now you mm. can stay here blind and act like you never had an opportunity. So I can't let you make it, or then I'm forced to make it. Mm. And I don't feel like I'm getting off my butt, so I can't allow you to succeed. So wow. it's not personal. I never took it personal. Yeah. Um, and to this day, you still got people that laugh when they say, man, this boy is actually still retired. I'm like, yeah, you thought I was going to backslide <laughs> Let me get this straight. You thought I was going. You thought I was going to backslide because you didn't come along. Yeah. No. Not only am I not backsliding, I moved on to, to other things. Now I'm on my own corporation. You know. So right. 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 What do you? What do you? Um, do you have advice for? Because a lot of times you see on social media people. Um, you know, they talk. They talk a lot about, hey, my friends and family aren't joining my business. Like you said, your friends and family didn't join your business. Still, you were able to build a highly successful. Uh, you know dynasty right so yeah. what advice do you have for people who are concerned about that should they even concern themselves about friends and family not joining no nah, because most friends and family members aren't going to be the people to take you to the top anyway in mm. fact the people you got in your group right now are not going to be the people that take you to the top Ooh. you're going to have to build your business in layers anyway so the first group of people are your people that you tested on right i consider my friends and family it's just, it's just my test market i just want to see if this approach is going to work how are you going to respond when i keep your interest like this I test, I tell all my guys that I train um, in my private I lock them, lock them room sessions, I say, look, I want you to test it on your family. Now, if you get results, great. But let's test it and see what kind of questions they have. Let's test it and see what you may have to overcome. Then there's the first wave of people who actually do join after you get through it to the test market. Right. Well, those people aren't going to be the people that actually take you all the way to the top anyway. So mm. anybody that, that's like, that's like me being a baseball or basketball player and saying, hey, why aren't my friends and family drib dribbling as good as me? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's like me getting a job at Google and saying, hey, why can't my brother get a job here too? You know why? Because mm -hmm. everybody's not meant to play basketball. Everybody's not meant to work at Google. Everybody's not meant to be an attorney. 
everybody's not meant to be a, a, a educator. So why do we get in network marketing and we think everybody's meant to be a networker? You, you see the difference? Mm, yeah, yeah. So when you understand that it's business, just like any other business, you remove all this emotional attachment and you'll get a better outcome. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's good stuff. Builder Stuff TV family, man. I hope y'all taking notes. Make sure you like this video, share it. Someone is definitely gonna be inspired. Brian, let me ask you this: We talked about the internet, social media. Uh, what do you think social media and the internet? Because you know, of course, people had their ideas about MLM, right? Network marketing, and you know they had their ideas about what they think the industry really is, right? Some people think it's a pyramid scheme. Some people think it's a scam, right? Some people, just a a, a, a certain group of people, right? What? How do you think um, net, uh, the internet and social media? How do you think? What do you think is done for the brand? Of network marketing overall. Uh, well, I think like anything, it's either going to add tremendous value or it's going to hurt. So it, it's not what it's done for the industry or network marketing. What it's done for entrepreneurship, period. Right. So right now, I'm, I'm more of a speaker, trainer, and coach. So what it does for entrepreneurship, not just MLM, is it highlights those who are great, and it it can destroy those who are not you know what i mean mm -hmm. if you can see through all the fake and phoniness of a person's pictures or the vacation that they're on every every day and yeah. if you can see through um <laughs> you see through find real consistency those of us that have a, a real brand with a real message with a real content with real products and services with real coaching that's having real results then you know those people are gonna um, stand out. You know what I mean? When the mm -hmm. when the snakes when the grass is cut, the snakes are showing. So what the internet does, it just kind of it'll expose over time anyone that has inconsistencies in their story, and then anyone who has consistencies in their story, and anyone who has real products and services and testimonies that's helping people, then it'll do that. You know what I mean? So right. me, for example, my big thing is personal empowerment, economic empowerment. Right, I'm the go-to guy for empowering, teaching you how to manage your time, and teaching you how to manage your money. So, yeah. anybody that's claiming to do that exact same thing, then go look at their stuff, and then look at my stuff. Right. If you're a chef and you claim you can cook, and you got online cooking classes, people can go look at your stuff, and they can look at your competitor stuff. My point is, it's gonna magnify or minimize whatever it is that you claim you're doing. So wow. it ain't even about network marketing, it's about entrepreneurship, period. Right. And now, it actually even the playing field. You just gotta get out there and do what you gotta do. Wow, 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 wow. That's powerful stuff, man. Let me change gears with you uh, a bit, Brian, and let's talk about, you know, the lifestyle. Let's talk about now since you've been able to, you know, obviously you've been in this industry for several years. Uh, you helped a lot of people. Um, the I think the, the you know, primarily people get involved in this industry to break free. Um, can you talk to us, talk to the Builders Club TV Nation about what life has been like for you since you've been able to break free uh, from the nine to five corporate America? Oh, man. I mean, man, let me tell you something. I tell people all the time. It's nothing better than having the time. Even even time is better than money, right? Mm. That's that, that, the number one course I have is, is my time and money management course because I want people to understand time is way better than money. Mm. You can always make more money if you have your time. Mm. So this freedom and flexibility of 20 years, man, you have to understand, I'm able to pursue any passion I have. Right, right. Um, I, 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 I'm passionate about vintage cars. I'm passionate about cars, period. But especially vintage cars. Yeah. Um, I got ten cars, but I got ten titles. You know what I'm saying? I don't have ten car notes. Wow. I have Ten titles. Every wow. car I have, my own. You know, um, they're assets. We, we use them in movies. We wear them out in weddings. We wear them with people that um, proms and um, videos and props and 1930s films. And I got a '58 convertible that they can put in any time timepiece movie. Oh man. So these are, you know, when you get free, you're able to create more time, which allows you to think about more assets that you can create. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I've been all over the world, man. Tahiti, uh, Monaco, um, Dubai, mm. you know, uh, you, I mean, Curacao. I mean, you name it, man. Like Italy, going to take my son on his first international trip, um, South Africa this year. So it's, it's about life experiences. When you stop chasing the dollar so much. Mm and make that the result or outcome of you enjoying your life, 
then the dollar has even more value than it really has because it gave you freedom. It didn't give you, it's not the, it's not the 10 cars or the trips and vacations. It's the, it's the accomplishment of doing things that most people won't do and then showing them how to accomplish the same thing, whatever that is for them. Does that mm, make sense? That's good. You don't have to be into vintage and antique cars like I am, but whatever that thing that is unique to you that you can pass and leave a legacy for your children, or it may be for you, it may be investing or learning a real estate game or whatever that is for you. Right. My time and freedom and flexibility gave me that third eye that says you can mm. do what it is that you're trying to do, not what I'm trying to do. Right, right, right. It's right. called intrinsic value, man. It's just, it's just something that people have to slowly understand as they get their time back. The intrinsic value that it has really can't be expressed in words. Wow, wow, yeah. man, <laughs> man, bringing it, bringing it. Will you go ahead and let us know, or let the family know, or give out your social media website, and so yeah. the family can get in touch if they like to. Yeah, man. Everything, everything is all the same. That's the good thing about it. Um, it's my name, Brian. My middle initial is N, and my last name is Bean. Like the green bean, jelly bean, pork and bean, lima bean. <laughs> I been call them all with the E on the end, right? So gotcha. Brian, B R I A N, B R I A N, not Y. B R I A N. N is my middle initial. That stands for Never Ask Me What That Means. And <laughs> Bean. So YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and my website is brianbean.com, man. So you see all my courses and programs, high level, low level, all the way up to ten thousand dollar courses and courses as small as nineteen dollars, man. So we got something for everybody. Tell us a little bit about what you do, because here's the thing: you've been in the industry, uh, you know, you, you've done some incredible things. Again, helped a lot of people. Now, fast forward today, current time, you know, what yeah. what is Brian Bean? What is Brian Bean into? Yeah. So in a, in a nutshell, man, okay, so I help people maximize three things, right? Their productivity, production, and profits. Mm. And what that basically means is productivity is personal. So if you're the kind of person that needs the go-to person to manage your time and your money, then that's more of my, um, that's my time and money management program. Right. In other words, those are the two things to me. Those are the only two forms of equity that people have. You got your time, you got your money. Mm. And my favorite motto is you can't be broke and busy, right? Mm. <laughs> so, a lot of people, so, that, a lot of people right there. <laughs> yeah, man. so that's the one where we use to elevate you personally. Now, when you're talking about production, that's more of a concept where it takes you getting people on the same page. So that's leadership, right? That's some of the network marketing skills, for an example. That's uh, where companies actually hire me to come in, whether it's a network marketing company or a non-network marketing company, and take their organizations to the next level. So productivity is about taking you to the next level. Wow. Production is about getting a group of people on the same page. So I do a lot of conflict resolution training, um, personality types, healthy work ethic, common sense, how to generate inspiration from within. So you have to look for motivation from the outside. That's what corporations hire me to do under my page program, P A Y S. And then, of course, profits, that's the income shifting, right? That's right. the gentleman who actually show you how to take your finances. That's the brand where I show you how to get to the next level financially. And stop thinking like people who don't have when you can have everything you want if you understood their abundance mindset mm. and how to start using money properly. So, mm. yeah, I mean, basically, man, if you want an increase in personal productivity, team pr production, or corporate personal profits, hey, man, BrianNBean.com, and I'll do a consultation with you. Wow, 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 amazing, man. Brian, we definitely got to have you back on the show. We have a, a, a couple of new series we'll be debuting soon, man. One being the Builders Club TV live chat series. This is what we'll, we'll go live at this point, Brian, and the audience now becomes the interviewer uh, instead of myself, and they get a chance to ask questions, talk to a mentor. <coughs> it could be questions about their business, questions about the industry, entrepreneurship in general, whatever they want to ask, this is their opportunity. The other thing coming uh, very soon is the Builders club tv presents a day in the life uh brian this is sort of like uh or going to be the lifestyles of the rich and famous for the network marketing industry uh where we you know we go on a virtual field trip and we get all access and you know we get to talk to you know mr brian bean or successful entrepreneurs and you show whatever you want but it's basically about motivation inspiration and belief and uh we get a chance to steal some more of those nuggets that you've been laying on us tonight man and uh we definitely got to have you back for that brother yeah man no doubt i'm here for you man i appreciate it like i said if you're about helping people and you're about giving people the real deal then i'm, I'm a part of anything you want to do man so yeah they can ask questions like you said on that platform 
and we do a day in the life of on that platform we show people what freedom and flexibility really looks like because it is real it does exist and let's make it exist for you absolutely man and i know we got a lot of car fans on the builders club tv i myself i love classic cars man so we'd love to see some of those whips <laughs> that would yeah, be amazing man. man that would be amazing but uh, definitely make sure that you guys like this video. Share this video with someone you want to inspire. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you thought about the interview. We definitely are going to have or look forward to having Mr. Brian Bean back. Builders Cup TV family, Brian Bean. Peace. No doubt. There's no longer a secret to success. Peace.